Lord be with you. Also with you. It is good to see each of you here today in our second contemporary service. And uh, before we begin, well, let's take a moment to greet, welcome one another. And uh, we have visitors uh, with us uh, today, so if you want to meet them, so please um, introduce yourself by name, and uh, let's do that now. And as we do that, can I ask that you actually all get up and move to this side? Because right. I feel like I'm singing to... <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Let's worship together. <laughs> and you can keep greeting each other too. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaim him your beloved Son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their, to their calling to be your sons and daughters, and empower us all with your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with the opening phrase of that stage.
we keep on sinning so that God can keep on showing us more and more kindness and forgiveness? Of course not, he said. But fortunately, we sin every day. Our nature is sinful. But Christ broke the power of sin over us when we were baptized and became part of God's family. That means that now we have access to God. And we can go to Him and confess to Him our sins. So I invite you to take a spiritual inventory, naming those times and actions and words that have worked to separate us Take this moment for some question. Let's confess together. Almighty God, eternal nature to love the darkness rather than the light. By, By nature we are sinful. What we do, what we say, even what we think, reveals the truth. In the name of Jesus, who was born so that he may have life, and for his sake, forgive me, heal me, restore me by your grace, guard me from evil.
most in love and nature was buried as Christ was. And when God the Father, the glorious power, brought Jesus back to life again, we were given his wonderful new life to enjoy. Because of God's mercy, you are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You know, death and sin has no power over us anymore. And Paul encouraged us not to let sin control our lives anymore. We now share Christ's new life. And if God is for us, then who could be against us? Who could ever stop us from following Jesus?
all the struggle. body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you strong and preserve you in the true faith today and into eternity. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite the children to uh, our children's church. Uh, Heather Christian is our teacher today. The Old Testament lesson for today is recorded in the 42nd chapter of Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I, whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness, he will bring forth justice. He will not fall or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his law, the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says. He who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open the eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel is recorded in the book of Matthew, chapter 3. John, uh, Jesus left Galilee and went to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John kept objecting and said, I ought to be baptized by you. Why have you come to me? Jesus answered, For now this is how it should be, because we must do all that God wants us to do. Then John agreed. So Jesus was baptized. 
And as soon as he came out of the water, the sky opened, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down on him like a dove. Then a voice from heaven said, This is my own dear son, and I am pleased with him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Imagine living in a world where you can get a dessert first before eating your vegetables. My six-year-old thinks that it will be a, a perfect place. She said that when she was listening to my sermon when I was practicing at home. Wouldn't you agree? It would be great. I mean, some still think that that's a good idea. You have dessert first, and then uh, dinner. You know, we are conditioned to think that we must do something first in order to earn something else. You know, eat your vegetables first, and then get ice cream. Do your homework first, and then you can play video games or go out with your friends. And even as adults, we still think this way. Work really hard, and you will get around. But it is not the same way with God. In the Gospel reading this, morning, uh, this evening, we've heard the story of the baptism of Jesus. And this took place before Jesus started his ministry. And up to this point, he has, not, he has done nothing as far as his ministry. No sermons, no miracles, healings, or anything. Yet, hears the words from God as he has been baptized. And this is what he said. This is my own dear son, and I am pleased with him. He has done nothing, yet he is declared beloved while pleasing to God. Now the baptism that John carried out is called the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And John was calling Israel, Israel to repentance, and those who wanted to be baptized acknowledge their sins and profess their faith that through the coming Messiah they will be forgiven. But the promised Messiah had already arrived. The one Isaiah prophesied had already come. It was Jesus. And this is what Jesus. Isaiah said about Jesus years ago, and this is what we've heard. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. John at first objected to baptizing Jesus, but then he recognized that Jesus is the promised Messiah. You know, Jesus' baptism was not a baptism of repentance. It was a baptism for the inauguration of his ministry, sort of like the presidential inauguration, when a new president comes and assumes his position and authority and acts upon his plan. Jesus' baptism was sort of like a new birth. He was a sinless man, but he was there to fulfill the prophecies about him. And so he says to John, for now, this is how it should be. 
Because we must do all that God wants us to do. In his baptism, Jesus is giving us an example for us to follow. He, his baptism is a step of obedience. He is touched by the Holy Spirit, anointed by the Holy Spirit. He's set apart for this particular ministry that he's doing, and he is identified as God's only son. All before he started his ministry. Talk about receiving a reward before you do any work. You know, God's love is indescribable. It's a love without deserving, without having to do anything. And this is the love that God showered over us when we were baptized. And this is the love that continues to grow in us as we partake of the body and blood and as we hear God's word. You know, John said about, John said this about Jesus. After me will come one who is more powerful than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Jesus was that promised Messiah. Before he went back to the Father, he said to his disciples, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our baptism was instituted by God and Christ commanded his church to baptize all nations. You know, baptism is not just plain water, but it is water combined with God's promise. His promises are forgiveness of sins, deliverance from death and the devil, and eternal salvation. And this blessing we receive because Jesus defeated sin, death, and the devil when he took upon himself the sins of all of us. He was sinless, perfect in all ways. But in order to save us, he had to become sin in order to receive the ultimate punishment, death, death on a cross, a death undeserved. But death had no effect on him. And on the third day, he rose again. And his victory is our victory now. You know, Jesus did all that because he loves us. It's a love that requires that you and I do nothing to deserve it. In fact, we can do nothing to deserve it. God's gifts are only for us to receive. You know, Jesus was touched by, he was anointed by the Holy Spirit and identified as God's only son. So when we are baptized, we too receive the Holy Spirit. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit and we are too identified as children of God. We become his children in baptism. His Holy Spirit plays in us faith and our baptism and that faith grows as we listen to God's words, as we love one another, as we partake of his body and blood. We are now his children. And that means that we belong to God. We are part of God's family here at, at Somerset Hills Lutheran Church, but also at the, ch at the church at large. And our belonging to God is God's doing. There's nothing that you and I can do to receive that. You know, along with Jesus, our ministry begins with our baptism. God's plan for the world is for everyone to be saved. And Jesus commanded us to make disciples and to teach them about Jesus. We have been set apart for that purpose of showing God's love through Jesus others in our lives. Back in December, some confirmation students and parents delivered Advent calendars to some of the uh, children that participated in our evening vacation Bible school. There you can see some of the parents of confirmation students. You know, the confirmation students taught the children why we use the Advent calendar 
And the parents also received a devotional, a prayer card, and some cookies. As a church, we went to where the need is. As a church, we taught them about Jesus. We taught them how to be ready for his coming. And this is God's desire for us, to go out to the world and to teach children about God's love. You know it doesn't end there. It continues as you start the week tomorrow, Monday, right? No one wants to think about that. But it continues as you go to work tomorrow. It continues as you drive your children to school. It continues as you live a life that cares for others just as Jesus cares for us. It continues as you live a life that trusts God's promises. It continues as you live a life that reflects God's love others. Now you will probably be the only Jesus that your co-worker or the mom at the playground will see. Think about that. You will be the only example of love that someone will see out there. Imagine living in a world where you can get dessert first before eating your vegetables. I want to ask you now. You know, yes, we are conditioned to think that we must do something in order to earn something else. It is not the same with God. And that means that we do not have to work. We do not have to do anything to earn God's love other than to receive. And once we have received His love, we respond in obedience to God's plan for this world. You know, once we receive his love, we respond in obedience, and his plan is fulfilled in us and through us. And this is not a forced obedience, but something that we do voluntary. And we say, we want to please God. We want to, we willingly want to please and obey him. You know, we love God because he loved us in our baptism, in our baptism, he sealed us with his Holy Spirit. And now we are his children. And we respond to him in obedience. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with the uh, prayers, the intercession. Let us pray. Holy God, you are the mighty Lord. You are the gracious Father. We would praise you for the mighty acts of your hand by which you have delivered your people in the past. And now by the coming of your Son, Jesus, into our world, especially through his death and resurrection, you have set us free from the bondage to sin and death. Through the grace and other blessings we receive in baptism, Lord, free us from our slavery to sin and set us on the path of following Christ, in word and action, to shine with the light and love of Christ, near and far. Lord, in your mercy. In this stress-filled, fracturing, chaotic world, we pray, Father, that you would ease the pain of heartache financial crisis, physical suffering. Hear our prayers today, especially for Martin Forsberg, Anna Stadmiller, and Lisa Chittenberg. We pray for those saddened by the death of loved ones, including Mary Sanders and her family. And we pray for those suffering broken relationships, those dealing with depression and loneliness. Lord, we pray that you would Surround them with your spirit of peace and minister to them by your gentle but powerful touch and through the care of your people. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless us, Father, with your Holy Spirit. Anoint us with your love and give us the desire to obey your command to make disciples of all nations and all people. May the proclamation of your truth, Lord, 
and the willing servants of the people of your congregation, along with others throughout New Jersey and our missionaries, Pastor Marla Davis, Dr. Christian Small, and the Bethania Minister in India, make a difference for Christ in the lives of people here in this community and in many places near and far. Lord, your mercy. Lord, wash away the sin of all those who are cleansed by the water, the word of baptism. And bring us forth as inheritors of your glorious kingdom, as we pray for and wait for thy kingdom to come. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit reign one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand for the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.